Welcome to today's webinar on Ohio child support. I am currently using the cloud version of family law software. This is 100% online. If you are using the desktop version, you have all of the same tools. It is offline and requires a few updates a year. If you'd like to update or upgrade, excuse me, to cloud family law software, please reach out to us and then your version will look just like this. What I have done in family law software cloud is in the settings, I have loaded a sample file. So if you were to open the sample file in family law software, you would see exactly what I have um, in front of me here. You would see the same parties, you would see the same children's names, et cetera. So when you calculate child support, there's two ways to start. So if you used family law software to create a financial affidavit or budget report, any information that you've entered in these sections or information that you have had your client enter online for you, any of this information will populate your child support calculator as well. So data is never double entered, it's never lost, it's always used throughout the program. So one-time data entry. If you click child support, this is the child support calculator. And the first child support calculator that we have is quick. So when you start your child support calculation by default, we start you in what we call our quick calculator. This calculator is intended for simple cases or consultations. So we have a little note at the top. And the reason we have that note there is if your case is a little bit more complex or has more data entry than is on this screen, you want to switch to the complete calculator. So if you're on this screen, you'll see children, you'll see one source of income and health insurance and spousal support. So if your case has more data entry than this, all you have to do is click complete. Uh, know that child support is a live number at the top. So as we make changes to the data, you're going to see if it has an impact on child support, this number will change automatically. So let's switch to the complete calculator. When I switch to the complete calculator, you'll instantly notice that the top is different. So you're going to notice the text at the top. What is this text at the top? If there's anything new in your state, so specifically in Ohio, your basic child support guideline schedule has changed that was effective this summer. Any case that you start in family law software will assume that that is the guideline that you want to use. So if anything is new in your state, you're going to see that at the top. Again, if you're a desktop user, you have to update your software so that you can see if anything is new. Uh, taxability of spousal support, that is not new, uh, but we still keep it there because there's still a lot of questions about that, even though this law passed, it's been effective since 2018 as far as the taxability of spousal support. If you're doing some type of modification case um, or a case where alimony would be treated um, as taxable for federal purposes, you may want to uncheck those boxes. All right, so let's jump into some data entry. So I have two children here. I have Kim and I have Reese. They each have their own line and it has a lot of really important information. Uh, first off is going to be the date of birth. That lets us know the maximum if they're too old to, to be a part of the child support calculation. It also comes in handy when we get to the section regarding child care costs. So the date of birth is important for tax reasons, for child support reasons and for uh, the um, daycare, childcare stuff. Over here, you're going to see your overnights. The children can be on different schedules. So this child could have 300 overnights with mom and then the other child has 245 overnights with mom or Taylor or the first party. As you change, so for instance, if I change the majority time sharing parent to Blake for both children, we will instantly see an impact on child support but you will also notice that whoever has the children the most, the majority of overnights, they will be claiming all of the tax credits related to those children. So whoever has the children the most will get these tax credits. They also automatically get assigned head of household, which we will see later. And so if there's multiple children and 
parent one is going to claim the first child and parent two is claiming the second child, this is a drop down. So anytime you see text that you did not specifically enter, it is a drop down. So you have the options of Taylor Blake alternating or neither. And I can change who is claiming the child for the tax credits easily right there. You might notice that some things affect child support and other things do not. It's still really important that when you are using the calculator, if you're just using it for child support, maybe not so important, but if you care about doing an income analysis later to see what their true income is after taxes, these elections are going to be very important, especially when you're looking at available income for alimony or social support. So if I then, let's say instead that dad has, we'll just say 95 overnights. Blake has 95 overnights with the children. We have an election here. So this is unique to Ohio. If time sharing is over 90 overnights and you want us to apply a deviation based off of overnights, it's technically not in the statute, but it's extremely common practice that the higher time sharing is that you may request a deviation based off of time. This will not audit, this will always be unchecked. So if you want to apply this deviation, all you do is check this box and you will instantly see the effect on child support. So you can check it or uncheck it and see the impact on your child support. What else? In family law software, you can do a true 50-50 time sharing. So if I wanted to type in 182.5 for each child, you can. You would definitely want to pay attention to the tax credits here, uh, or you may want to run, or you may want to run the time sharing with 183 versus 182. That's 100 percent up to you how you do that. You can see the impact on child support. Um, the software will also do split custody. So if you have a case where time sharing is split, so in this case, Taylor has this child for 300 overnights, but this child she only has for 200 overnights. You can see the result at the top. If you have a split custody case, you could instead run child support twice. So I could delete this child and see what the child support result is, print the worksheet, and then calculate child support for the other child. So that's another option as well. So the program is going to work how you need it to, but obviously just pay attention to the final numbers and let's go look at some printouts. So. Anytime that you are running child support numbers and you're wondering, am I doing this right? Where are these numbers going? You can come over here and click print guideline. So if I click print guideline, the program knows it's solar shared, it's not split. And you will see that all of these numbers are populating in blue. And this is where the calculation is happening. You do not want to override these numbers. This is your print preview. So we will come back here. But if at any time you're wondering what does the worksheet look like, you can. And there's also a note at the top here. So if you were running multiple scenarios and you want to have multiple PDFs, you might want to make a note at the top here about what you have changed with that particular worksheet, especially if you're playing around with equal time sharing or split custody case situations and you want to have multiple PDFs. Uh, that would be a way to keep track of scenarios that you are building. All right, let's go back to the child support calculator. If you add children, so right now I have two children. If you want to add another child, you just click add, 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 as many children as you need. Anytime that you add a child, they're going to have their own blank line. If this child does not belong to Taylor and Blake, so this is a child from outside of the relationship, you would just uncheck this box here. So if I uncheck this box, what the program now is doing is that it assumes that these two children are of the relationship of Taylor and Blake, but this child is outside but belongs to Taylor and Taylor is claiming this child for tax purposes. Again, it's more about impacting, in this case, Taylor's net income because she may be entitled to tax credits related to that child that she's claiming on her taxes, uh, or Taylor is entitled to the head of household tax designation status because of that child. I'm going to delete that extra child. 
this is a ton of information. So just coming into this first section, um, it's asking for a lot of data and it goes a lot of different places and does a lot of different things. If you ever have questions about what we mean by child of this relationship or tax dependent, you'll notice that there's this blue bubble with a question mark inside. And so if I click it, it's going to have an explanation about what data we are looking for, how it's going to impact your calculations. It'll explain a local court rule or a statute, or it might just be about federal taxes. In this case, this is all about how claiming children as your dependent impacts your taxes. So it's a pretty big explanation. All right, so let's move on to income. So I'm going to scroll down and let's go into wages and filing status. So everything that you enter in family law software is going to be gross. So we're looking for those gross numbers for your calculation. And then in the background, we're going to calculate the taxes to figure out their available net income. We are automatically going to calculate those taxes. The tax that we do not automatically calculate is going to be any local tax rate. So if there is a local tax rate, you would have to apply that percentage here. But other than that, we would calculate federal and state taxes. Gross income, everybody gets paid differently. So right now I have Taylor and Blake and they're both paid annual, but let's say that Taylor brings in her paycheck and it says that Taylor makes $800 a week. I would just click this drop down and change it to uh, per week. So those are the different pay periods. The goal with family law software is that you don't have to take out a calculator. You use the tools within the program to make modifications. Let's say that Taylor is unemployed or Taylor is making minimum wage and I want to impute minimum wage. We have this box here. And if I check this box, we will apply minimum wage in your state. It's currently $10.10 an hour. So right now Taylor has minimum wage and we calculate that on a weekly basis. But if you were to do a budget report or affidavit, we would convert it into a monthly number or annual number whatever the report requests, that's what we are going to do. And so if Taylor is a contractor and Taylor says, well, I make $25 an hour, I could update this and say $25, we'll assume 40 hours a week. If we keep on with this scenario that Taylor's a contractor, you may want to check this box, which means that Taylor is self-employed, 1099, fully subject to the self-employment tax. On the other side, we have Blake. Blake makes a good living, $150,000 a year. That's not a bad day, not a bad year. Um, and so there's a question in the chat about high, high income earners. Let's say that this family is even higher. And let's, I'm just going to type in the $336,000 a year. So between one extra zero. Um, so let's say that we're, we're dealing with a couple with super high income. Um, we're going to see that tool down here. So if the parties have income over the $336,000, we do have a special worksheet for that. Before we click on that, though, here's the tax filing status that we discussed. Whoever has the children the most will be designated head of household versus the other party is single. But this is a drop down. They might have already remarried or they might qualify for head of household on their own. Uh, and so that can be easily changed. If you need to change the tax year, that's super easy to do now. We assume we're in 2023, but if you have some type of retroactive issues, you can go uh, back in tax years. All right, high income persons. So let's click the high income worksheet here. And if you click on that worksheet here, number one, they have to have the income. So if they do not have the income above that threshold and you click through these tools, it's not going to work. By default, we're going to ignore the income outside of the guideline. And so that will be our default. So if that's what you want, don't you don't have to come to this worksheet, but obviously we suggest you do just to see the impact. Which option you choose is 
up to you. You'll see this live number at the top. So if I click our marginal option, which we recommend because we think it's fair, um, you would check this box and then you see how child support changes. If you have questions about what we're doing, you would click this blue bubble here, what we mean by the marginal rate and why we think that it is fairer. I have heard from a lot of Ohio users that judges or different agencies would take the average. And so if I click the average, child support goes up. So it usually results in a higher child support number. And so there's reasons why your fact finder or an agency would want to do that. If they're representing a lower income person, they're trying to go for a higher child support number. There's different theories as to why. So if you want to match someone's number using the average, you would have to use that option here. And so with that being said, anytime that you're using family law software, and you get a result that is different from another person, these are the types of things that can make those differences. So if you have a higher income, per, a higher income family, you might want to go check out this worksheet. Um, the time sharing, you know, is the time sharing different? Did you apply a deviation based off of time sharing? If you put the same information in, you're going to get the same information out. And so if you have questions about that, uh, let me just use the back button in my browser. And it brings me back to the income section. And then that's where we were was that worksheet for higher income parties. So you definitely want to click on that and you know look at the different options and advocate for whichever is best. And if you have questions about what you should be doing in your particular case, just click on the blue bubbles and they'll help guide you um, or use you know what your fact finder is using. So that average uh, can come in handy. All right, let's move on to other types of income. So the next folder is what we call wage-like income, which is kind of like the hodgepodge of income. So disability tips, bonuses, et cetera. So we have, let's scroll all the way up, excuse me. So here's wage-like income. The first one that is unique to your state is going to be the way that you handle bonuses. There's actually four places to enter bonus. So bonuses, excuse me. You have a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and then you'll notice the fourth one is here. This bonus does not impact your child support calculation. This bonus is for what you want for future financial projections or available net income. So if you put a bonus in here, that's what that analysis is going to be for. But if you're doing the bonus, the calculation for child support, you need to look at these three numbers. And these are going to be annual bonuses since they've happened in the past. In theory, you should already know what the full bonus was. And so um, if I were to go to print, there'd be nothing. Even though there's a bonus here, if I click print, there will be no bonus. So you type in the bonuses from you know, last year, we'll just say they've just been doing better over time. Mm, maybe they didn't have a bonus one year, okay? And so once you pop in the bonus information and you go back to print guideline, at this point, we've got a lot more data, you'll see that you have your annual gross income and then your bonus section is going to be filled in. So that's the appropriate way to do the bonus. I know it can be a little confusing, but it's because the way that your statute is built with the past three years having to be factored in. And then family law software is obviously trying to do future financial projections to help your clients make decisions. And that's why when I'm in the, I'm going back. That's why when you're in this section, this is for your statutes purposes, but this bonus line is really to analyze what the parties currently have for support purposes and, and what's their financial health post dissolution. And so that's that balance that you're gonna have with family law software. Again, if you're looking at this list, these are all sources of income that are coming in. If you look at one of these lines and you're like, wait a minute, public assistance is not a part of the calculation. Click on this little blue bubble um, and we'll say, don't worry, it is not included in the child support calculation. But again, we're trying to figure out how much parties how much money the parties actually have. So if you were to enter in a source of income that should have no impact on child support, you'll see that it does not have an impact on child support. 
All of the sources of income can be marked as taxable or non-taxable. Again, so that's going to be raising their income or lowering their final net income um, based off of those tax consequences. And then you'll see down here that these are just special weird sources of income. These are blank lines that you can use. So for instance, if Blake were in the military and there's like a housing allowance. So, so weird things that are on their paycheck, weird sources of income that you want to have a special line describing it that's what these are for. So Taylor and Blake each have their own sections for that. The last form of income in the wage like is going to be derivative benefits. What do we mean by that? This is if the child receives a social security check because of the disability or retirement of one of their parents. There's four boxes for one number. <laughs> and so I just tell users, slow down. So who, whoever's receiving the money, it goes into their column. And then you have to let us know, is it because their disability or the other parent's disability? And if you have questions about that calculation or what we mean by derivative benefits, we have a couple of bubbles there for you. Let's start talking about deductions here. So we're reducing available income, the deductions folder. The big one is going to be health. So here you can see we have health, dental, and vision. We have it separated because we're trying to collect the data the way that you're receiving it, especially how paychecks are laid out, but every health plan is different. So we have those three boxes here. And then if you your eyes immediately went here for health, dental, and vision, these are tax consequences related to health, dental, and vision. So if I type in $900 a month paid by Blake, um, you can see that you know he's the payer for health insurance. That doesn't mean Taylor isn't paying for these things as well. So obviously enter in the information appropriately and see the impact on child support. If you are concerned about net income in your particular case, we just assume that it's a W-2 pay deduction and these are drop downs. So if you're a financial professional and you're like, oh, well, they're self-employed or they have a business and it, you know, health insurance premiums affect their income differently, we have tools built in for you. The next big one is going to be childcare expenses. And so remember, number one, what's the child's date of birth? That was in the children's section. It's going to have a direct impact on what we're doing here. Um, are you doing a shared custody or split custody? So you choose accordingly. So let's just do in this case, I think we have a kind of like a normal time sharing case. And I scroll to the top. Yellow means we want information from you. Blue means that we are doing math or making suggestions for you. And so you can see that these are the children's names at the top and the parents' names are here. So Taylor, let's say she's paying annual, by the way, uh, $13,000. Maybe Kim is a baby in diapers. And then Reese is a little less expensive because he's potty trained. I don't know. Um, and so this is saying that Taylor is paying for both children for daycare. Now, Maximum allowable. This is per your statute. So if I click this bubble here, it basically says if a kid is one, the three, the six, the 13, if the children, if you want to ignore these numbers by agreement, uh, or the child is like right on the verge, like they're about to go into a different level, you might want to modify the maximums because you'll see here that these are going to correlate with the children's um, ages. These numbers can be overridden. If you ever overwrite a number, it's going to turn red. And that can be unnerving to users. You're like, why did this number turn red? It's okay. If you know why you're doing something and you're doing it with a purpose and the number's red, it's okay. But the program is letting you know that we made a suggestion and you decided to not go with that suggestion, but you will see that the calculation does update accordingly. And so if then you want to delete that red number, all you do is highlight it and delete it. Um, and it goes back to the blue calculated field or suggestion. So again, for childcare, number one, the date of birth is important. And number two, if you wanna make modifications to this screen, you can. Also this worksheet, and we're gonna go over a few other worksheets when we go back into printing. 
I think it's a great idea to just click PDF in the top right hand corner and we'll turn this into a PDF for you. And this is a really great attachment to your final numbers or anything that you're providing in your parenting plan or, or anything that you're providing. These are really great supplemental worksheets so that you can show your work, especially if you're going to do something outside of the box, uh, you want to show the party how you came up with your numbers. And that's a really great way to do it is just click PDF. Great, right, let's scroll down. Um, spousal support on the current relationship and who is paying. So this number, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this number a little bit more when we get to the printout. Um, but if you put it here, it's going to be considered a part of their gross income. Um, this checkbox count as income for, for child support purposes or not. So you can check or uncheck that box and then you can look at that blue bubble to see if you if this is something you wanna incorporate or not. Uh, last, pretty straightforward, um, retirement union dues, money going out. So this is um, spousal support on other relationships. Um, that's where that's going to go. And then there is a final deviation worksheet here, which we're going to talk about when we go into the printing section uh, here. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, wait a minute, my client is older or retired or wealthy or owns a business, those types of income are going to be in this last folder. They're less common, especially when you have minor children. But again, if your clients are wealthier or older with minor children, then you do want to go into this box or if they're a business owner. And these last folders are about future cash projections. If you want, if you have multiple children and you want to see a step down report, meaning how child support is impacted as the children age out, you would click here. Um, and then you would scroll down. And then here's that hyperlink for step downs. So if you click here and you want to see what the step down is, you know, clearly things change over time. But if you want to see what the current step down would be, that's the place where it would be located. All right, so child support, it's pretty high in this case. So it's $3,700 paid by Blake. Let's go look at the printout. So when I click print guideline, which we had done previously, you can see the yellow. So if you need to put your case number, order number, or a note that will all be at the top, it tells you how many children are involved in the case. And we had talked about also support. So when you come to this printout, you would just click PDF but you'll see these hyperlinks throughout. And so you have the gross income worksheet. Where do these giant numbers come from? I click the gross income worksheet and I can see every source of income. Keeping in mind, alimony is going to be a part of that number. So when I click PDF, this is a great attachment to your child support guideline, which we were just looking at. Why am I pointing this out to you? Alimony. So there's been some revisions to this form. And one of the lines that's still there is line six. I get, we get a ton of feedback on line six from judges and different agencies and, and attorneys as well. What is line six for? We honestly, we don't know. So if you follow our child support income, this worksheet is showing you that alimony on the current case is being included in line one. If you do not want that to happen in your child support worksheet, do not put in spousal support on the current case, and we will not include it here. And you could instead put spousal support in this box or whatever other source of income you want to use, you would use this box accordingly. So if your fact finder, another party um, is using this box and you want to match those numbers, make sure that you are not double dipping. So check your worksheet, because if it's on this worksheet, it's included in this gross number. If you don't want it included, remove it from your calculation, and then you would come here on line six. It's the only yellow number field that you see, and you can pop that number in here. So maybe in the future, this line will disappear. For now, it's still there, and we're always looking for feedback on you know, how we can improve and how we can clarify this. But I just did a training for judges, and, and they wanted they were very big on number six, <laughs> you know, how do we use it? Where is it? Like th they're still using it. So if you're in one of those counties, that's what you would need to do. Uh, let me scroll down. So that was that gross income worksheet. If I keep on scrolling down, the extrapolated rates are going to be here. Um, and then if I come down a little further, uh, child care expenses, there's a worksheet here. So all of these are really great attachments um, for that. 
And then the last one that I hinted to was going to be the deviation worksheet. If you want to check out the deviation worksheet, you want to ask for a deviation, um, here are going to be all of your factors. And you would pop that in and see the result. Again, PDF. None of these worksheets are going to print or attach automatically. You have to click PDF and then use your PDF editor to put them together. What else do we have for Ohio? So this is all about child support and your child support number. If you come down here, we have other court forms. So if I click other court forms here, these are the other forms that we offer in Ohio. And so some of the information is already going to be filled in from your child support data. So if you click print court forms, uh, you've got your child support affidavit. That's going to be the most common one that you're going to use. So I could click enter data here so I can see what the form looks like and then pop in any outstanding information and just click PDF in the top right hand corner. So that was print court forms. And then the last one is print other Ohio forms. The only one in here is gonna be the IWO. So if I click the IWO, it'll show me what it looks like. Um, and I can put in some supplemental information. And then some of that information that I've already entered is going to be flowing over here. All right, so that is all about child support. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Our email is support at familylawsoftware.com. The program obviously has a lot of other tools. We have several YouTube videos that go over the analysis. So if you ever have to go through spousal support, as we were calculating child support, there was a lot of boxes you know, about taxes and available income and all of, the, all of those numbers are actually flowing here to what we call support impact. So when we were talking about you know, head of household versus single, all of that was about available income. And so that those final numbers you're going to see here. So if you have questions about that, please check out those YouTube videos. I'll link those um, in the YouTube video that will be posted this week. So you can see that. If you ever have any questions and you just, you know, you forget how to reach out to us, support is built into the program, support and program help. So thank you so much for joining this webinar. We look forward to hearing from you as our subscribers. And again, this video will be posted very soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day.